Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dr. Jasmine Nolan Echols, and I am the chair of the City of St. Louis Charter Commission. I am pleased to call to order this special meeting for the City Charter Commission in order to get the debriefing that we have scheduled on the agenda today. We welcome all members of the public that have decided to join us on this special meeting. The first agenda on the item on the agenda, the first, the first item on the agenda is the roll call that we'll have completed by Secretary Bobo. I believe she's here. Let me make sure she's here. Okay, Secretary Bobo will have to be unmuted in order to do the roll call. I am present. I'm having a hard time with audio, so I will go ahead and um, record some notes. Um, but I am watching also from YouTube. Oh. Secretary Bobo, can you complete the roll call or do you need me to complete it for you? Okay, I'll go ahead and complete it. Vice Chair Sheridan. Here. Commissioner Crossland. Present. Commissioner Dwight. Commissioner Garth. Commissioner Grant. Present. Commissioner Antaliaga. Antaliata. It looks like both he and Christopher Garth are in the on the attendee list. I see their names there, but they're not panelists. Okay, they aren't able to unmute themselves. They have to be unmuted. Okay, and Commissioner Riley. I don't see them on the present. Okay, Shannon, you do not see them. They have to be made panelists. They were just moved over. So everyone should have received a panelist um, link. Or each of the commissioners at least should have received a panelist link. Okay, but they're being moved over if they click the wrong link or however that may have worked. I believe they'll need to go out and come back in using the proper link. Okay, so we need to give them time to do that. Shana, how would you wanna proceed with the roll call given that they have to come out and come back in in order to be on the panel? I think you can proceed with the roll call. Um, you need six members of the commission to proceed with commission business and you have uh, everything you need to proceed. Okay. We have six voting members present that gives us quorum, correct? Yeah, so you can just call the roll for- Let me call Yeah. Call the roll again, okay. Chair Nolan Eccles is myself, I'm here. Vice Chair Sheridan. Present. Commissioner Crossland. Present. Commissioner Dwight. Commissioner Garth. Commissioner Grant. Present. Commissioner Taliato. Present. Commissioner Riley. Present. Secretary Bobo. With six of the nine voting members present, we have a quorum. We're going to move through to the agenda, the next item on the agenda. And the next item on the agenda is we're gonna have a presentation regarding demographic and economic trends. 
for St. Louis City and neighborhoods with comparison to Peer City from the Professor of Sociology and Demo Demography at St. Louis University, Dr. Ness. We appreciate you for joining us on today and we in advance appreciate your presentation for us. You can begin, Sheena, does he have access to the unmuted and everything necessary and needed? I will need access to share my screen. Okay. And you should be good to go with that. Okay. I, I believe I, I have 40 minutes to make the presentation. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Well, I, I want to thank you for giving me the opportunity to share um, research that we have been doing um, in the city of St. Louis and in um, the United States in general on demographic trends uh, in American cities. Today's talk is simply going to focus on the city of St. Louis. And I was very intentional with using the word demographic hurdles and prosperity. When we think about demographic changes and we wanna understand um, if we're trying to change the city population trends to achieve economic and social prosperity, I think that we have, a, have to have a good understanding of what some of the hurdles are that are facing uh, the city of St. Louis and, and thinking about policies that um, different types of institutions can um, talk about. I'm gonna present a lot of data uh, charts and so I don't expect anybody to remember the points, uh, the specific data points, but there are five things that I hope that you're able to take from this presentation. And that the city itself is going through a lot of demographic transitions, that's theme one. The theme two is that um, oftentimes we will hear um, data about the city of St. Louis, but in fact, uh, there are different cities within the city of St. Louis or different districts within the city. And so we'll talk a little bit about that. We do a lot of work in our lab on um, spatial analysis, looking at um, these demographic transitions at the neighborhood level, uh, even at very micro patterns. And so we'll talk about some of the new work we're doing. And then the question we get asked a lot is, St. Louis, is it unique or is it different? So in our database, we, we have over um, 300 cities um, that we've been tracking um, for many decades. And so St. Louis is part of that city. And so today's presentation, I'm just pulling out a handful of cities to kind of show you what the trends look like when you start to compare um, what's, what's going on in other cities. And then I'll just have a few um, final comments about some demographic, how we kind of think about the future and what these trends mean. I want to start out with this, this brief quote about um, demographic uh, transitions. The fundamental principle of demography is that demographic transitions are an inevitable aspect of change, irrespective of whether individuals recognize, acknowledge, or accept the underlying demographic realities and trends. And so I get lots of questions, or a lot of people will, when I make demographic presentations, will say, I just don't believe it. And I'm not my point here is not to try to convince anybody of anything. I'm just simply going to present facts and kind of show what the trends are. I, I just want to make a, a, a brief comment about this presentation and the data analysis. It is limited to the city of St. Louis. And uh, as we recognize that the city boundaries do not, um, in fact, stop people from moving. Um, they, people are able to move across the city boundaries for jobs, uh, for recreational activities. And so um, to really understand what's going on, we need a larger uh, analysis of the metropolitan region. And I'll be making that presentation in, in a couple of weeks. Uh, and so this, this presentation is just about what's happening in the city boundaries. But we need to be mindful that um, the St. Louis metropolitan region is a bi-state region and that we have people moving in and out of the city into the suburbs in Missouri and into possibly um, Illinois. And then we have a larger analysis that basically is, is showing new trends of um, households moving out of the St. Louis metropolitan region. 
just a few notes on the data. Um, most of the data for this presentation comes from the U.S. Census. It's the decennial census, the commun American Community Survey, and population estimates. And we, we try not to rely on just one single data source. Um, we try to triangulate um, the stories that we tell using different databases. Uh, the methodology for the American Community Survey and the population estimates are different. And so um, they should be, in theory, be telling the same story of what's happening. They provide different types of data uh, in terms of um, why a population is changing. The community, American Community Survey will provide data on population, um, households, poverty, education, et cetera. But the population estimates give us information on births and deaths and migration in and out of a city. We also uh, use this data for the Center for Health um, Statistics to get more detailed information on uh, babies that are born and people who are dying. Um, and so that's an independent source. And then we were able to use um, data to understand crime in the city of St. Louis. Uh, our database goes back to 2005. Unfortunately, um, that, that database is no longer available to the public. And so our analysis of crime has stopped as of 2019 uh, using, our, using our algorithms at, at the micro level analysis. So I'm just gonna briefly spend a few minutes the, the history of, of the city of St. Louis. Our database goes back to 1840, but I'm just presenting it from 1900. And we can see from um, 1900, there was an increase in uh, the population here and it, in, it increases to uh, 1950. And then we see a sharp decline to 1980 and then a, a continued decline in the population to 2020. And this is this the city on data here. We see that um, lar a large part of that decline was um, the movement of the white population that came into the city, uh, but then exited the city after 1950. And then we see a, a continued exodus um, up until the 2020 census. We have data for the, the black population and we, we can see that the black population was moving into the city up until 1970. And then similar to the white population, we see a, a decline of the black population here. So the next chart uh, shows the percent of uh, the population here. And so if we look at 1900, 94% of the city was white and 0% was black. Uh, but if we fast forward over time, we see that around 1990, the city was becoming um, equal. Um, but we now start to see, and then um, when we got the 2000 census, uh, the majority of the residents in the city were black um, and 45% were white. But we started to see that these changes um, we're starting to go away the gap between uh, percent white and percent black in the city. So what we're able to do, um, the US census in uh, 2000 started to um, provide a different type of method of collecting data and it's the American Community Survey. And instead of providing data every 10 years, they decided that they wanted to provide data every year starting in 2000, roughly 2006. And so we have, we have a population estimate every year of um, large cities um, in, in the entire United States, large geographical areas. And so what we were able to do is provide, um, these are population estimates. And so there's a top estimate and a bottom estimate of the population. But if we just look at 2010 um, data, we can see the one-year estimates for the city corresponds very closely to uh, the US census data here. That is a, a decline year by year of the population of the city of St. Louis. If we look at that same data, but use a different database using the population estimates, which is based on births and deaths and in, in migration and out migration, we get a very similar number here. It's a 10% decline uh, and that's the city population from 2000, uh, uh, this is 2011 data here. So the overall trend is that, this, that the year by year data is showing um, that the city is experiencing population decline. 
Well, what do you see happening over this past um, five years is a, a pretty, what I would, what I would argue, a, a meaningful um, decline in difference between the black population and the white population. Um, we, we had noted this in 2019, that there was the possibility that um, the white population would be larger than the black population in the city. And we see that in, in 2021, um, that was the case. And we now know in 2022, the two populations are statistically different from each other. And so the white population is larger than the black population in the city of St. Louis. And that gap, the trend shows that that gap is gonna continue, uh, at least for the near foreseeable future here. So corresponding with this, one of the questions we get, well, what about immigration? And so the city of St. Louis was, was actually home to one of the largest immigrant populations in the country. In 1850, more than 50% of the population in St. Louis was foreign born. But we can see um, when we look uh, past forward and, and come to 1900, uh, it was still 20, about 20%, 19% was foreign born in the city of St. Louis. Um, but we can see starting uh, 1910, um, it peaked and it started to see a decline in the absolute numbers of residents, but also in the percent of residents that were foreign born. We do see a peak in 1970 where uh, the foreign born population was starting um, to come in, especially by 1990, we started to see numbers um, increase and the percent is increasing here. But our year, our one-to-one -one, um, year estimates show us uh, mixed results. And so there's a lot of noise in the foreign born. Part of it could be due to referee, refugee resettlement in the city on a yearly basis. But we can see that, that the estimate itself is going up and down quite a bit. But we see starting in around 2017, a, a fairly clear decline in the estimate of the foreign born population. And so now it's starting to trend downward. And so we need to kind of keep an eye on um, what that means for the city population. So if you go back to the population estimates, one of the nice, th this is considered the gold standard to try to get an accurate uh, understanding of population in, in a geographical area. And so this was the latest population estimate uh, these, these numbers are a little bit different than ACS because these are from July to July and the estimates are from um, January 1 to January 1. But what we see here, um, what's important here is that it's, it's showing that the city is losing population, but it's one of the few cities, uh, counties, I'm using this as city county, it's one of the few counties that actually has positive natural population growth. Uh, and this, is, this has always been true of the city of St. Louis. They're, they've always had more babies born than uh, people dying. Uh, but I'm gonna show on another slide that that's, that's changing in, in many respects to um, excessive deaths that happen in the city over the past few years. The challenge for the city from the population estimates is that um, it's losing people. It's losing people. It's, it's the second largest loss behind St. Louis County in terms of residents who are leaving the city. Now, some of those residents, we can, we can use another database to show that they're actually moving to St. Louis County. Uh, but then we have residents who are leaving St. Louis County who are leaving, who are leaving either to St. Charles County, um, Lincoln County, or that we now have evidence that both the white population and black population are leaving the region of uh, St. Louis. What we were able to do is use these, um, the birth and death data to get a sense of natural growth. Uh, and as I mentioned, the St. Louis City County um, was actually had fairly large numbers for natural growth uh, when you compared it to the peer counties. But we see that over time, and this, is, this was 2007, we had the great demographic shock of the 2008 recession. Um, and this, this, is, this trend was true for almost every city in the United States. Uh, births were going up, fertility rates were going up. The recession happened in 2008 and a pretty significant decline happened. A little bit of bump there, but we see overall um, the rate of natural increase started to decline. And then we see COVID here, right? This is uh, 2019 is um, COVID. 
a little bit of a bounce here. And so I left 2022 uh, out to kind of give you a sense of what the future may hold. Uh, the, the 2022 birth data has been released in the past couple of weeks. The death data has not been released, but the birth data does show that uh, births are down. Uh, and so we should expect, uh, I don't think this is gonna go to zero. I think St. Louis City County is gonna be one of these few counties in the region that actually has pos positive natural growth, but it's, it's, very, it's very small now. And so this, um, this is something that it is possible in five years, five to 10 years, if the trends I'm gonna show you in a few minutes continue, it is possible that in the city of St. Louis, you will have more people dying than are being born. And that's, it's a possibility now. So if you actually look at year by year data births, we can see that uh, we go to 2007, um, we had 5,348 births. That was, it, it increased among all racial groups. And then if we look at the births um, for the city, it's, it's declined, uh, but we see it for the black and white mothers, um, significant declines in the number of absolute births here. To the point that, uh, and I'll talk about this more, um, if these trends continue, it is possible that we will have more births to white mothers than to black mothers. And that would be a significant demographic change for the city. And, and if, if it happens, it, it could happen as early as 2026, 2025, uh, where um, the number of babies born to white mo mothers will outnumber, outnumber the number of babies born to black mothers. We also picked this up. These are the birth rates. And so this, again, they're, they're declining. The slope for the black mothers is a lot larger than it is for white mothers. Um, but we have, um, we're already seeing, we get month to month data, we're already seeing that these trends appear to continue. And then if you look at fertility rates, uh, we can see a, a decline in fertility rates between black and white uh, women. Now this chart um, shows the number of females in the ages of 15 to 44 in the city of St. Louis. And I think it's, it, it highlights a trend that's, that's been happening and we see it in household formation. And that uh, white women between the ages of uh, 15 to 44 now outnumber black women between the ages of 15 to 44. And so this is why we, when we look at those birth projections, we say it is a possibility that uh, babies born to white mothers uh, could outnumber babies born to black mothers. Uh, if this trend of uh, the black female population continues and shows an exodus out of the city of St. Louis. Um, and there, there appears to be no, um, there appears to be no end at this point yet. We don't, we don't think that this is gonna stop anytime soon. So, one of the things we look at is household formation. And so um, those charts were about people, about residents, um, but we have, we have different types of household formations that exist. And so even though this is the paradox of the city of St. Louis, and it's the, a paradox of many cities, even though it has a shrinking population, the number of households have increased in the city, right? So this is, this is a paradox. How is it possible that we're seeing a population shrink, but the number of households have increased. And the answer is we're having, um, if you just look at it without race, we see that um, family households are roughly the same, but we start to see uh, big changes in non-family households, um, especially male households in the city of St. Louis. Um, and so that, that's gonna partly explain why, why we see this change happening. Um, this is um, household type by race. Um, and so now we start to see um, about 50% of the households in the city of St. Louis are white. And so it is possible in the next ACS, it will show a clear majority of the households in the city are white households, uh, or at least in the next two, two to three years, that's, that's the trend. And it has to do with, um, I'll show in a minute that there's a certain type of uh, household that's leaving the city of St. Louis. And it's gonna be um, this household here, uh, female headed households um, 
with children, um, we're gonna see are leaving the city in, in fairly large numbers. So this graph just shows you the change in household by race. And so if you just wanna pay attention to this chart, that really be, basically shows you uh, the main theme of demographic change in the city of St. Louis. White households have increased by 4,688 and black households have declined by 5,489 over this uh, 12 year period. Um, it's not even a close. There are, these are two demographic trends that are happening in the city over this past 12 years. Uh, we can see it in family households, black family households, where it's from, and then it's female headed household, uh, 6,107 households, uh, a decline there. Uh, and so we do not, we, and then you see it for the white households, it's non-family households and households living alone. So these, the city itself is going through a pretty significant demographic transition along racial lines in terms of household formation. If we look at people who live in the households, so instead of just looking at the housing unit, the people who live in households, we can see um, the decline here. So again, the Black population was larger than the white population, um, but we see uh, the declines here. And so these, uh, this is this is total population here. The next chart will show um, it by black and white. And we clearly see here um, the number of people, um, what those 5,000 households basically represented was roughly 39,000 people leaving uh, over that time period. And that corresponds to the individuals there. And it's, it's family households, and the biggest loss in households is in female-headed households uh, that have children, right? And so we are, you're losing, the city of St. Louis is losing its, um, they're losing their black families, children. I'm just gonna present one chart here. So if that's the case, then we should see this in school enrollment. And so the ACS data clearly shows that um, there has been a significant decline in school in school enrollment, roughly 28% decline um, from 53,000 to 38,000 in total school enrollment. I break it down by public versus private. Uh, it doesn't really matter how you break it down. Uh, there's just a decline in both public and private school enrollment. Um, and so both, both types of institutions are losing children. And they will, if the fertility rates and birth rates are correct, um, it will continue to lose um, children in, that, in this preschool area. Even if there's no migration happening, we're just gonna have fewer children coming into the city from declining birth and fertility rates. So this chart is, um, I think an interesting chart. It looks at the ratio of income to poverty levels of families. So it's looking simply at families. And so if you go back to the previous chart, um, there was very little change in family households between 2000 and 2010 for the city of the whole. The, the change is really by race um, between black and white. But what we see here is that the poverty rate has declined tremendously for the city of St. Louis. The family poverty rate has gone from 20% to 30, 13%. Uh, so this is roughly a seven point percentage decline or 36% decline. Um, and we see that those who are making, who have a ratio of two and over, so these are fairly well off families, has increased from 38,000 um, families to 46,000 families. And so we asked the question, is this, how does this look by race? And we simply, I'd simply look at one group here, and that's a black female household or no spouse present. And we clearly see here that we have lost about 6,700 black families. And we can see um, the families that were below poverty and the families that are above poverty. And um, we don't see this for the white families. Right? The, um, there's clearly the demographic trends here and the changes that are here are intersecting along racial lines. I have a few more minutes. I wanna talk a little bit about space and geography in the city of St. Louis. And earlier this, about 10 years ago, we had received a major grant to study micro patterns of inequality in the city of St. Louis. And that part of that report is online and you can go to the St. Louis Magazine. But we were looking at very small spaces of inequality, uh, basically 250 meters by 250 meters. And we, uh, at this time, there were, it was, um, technology was improving and we were able to identify 
areas of the city that contributed to segregation. And then we were able to show a relationship between uh, areas that had high levels of inequality measured on about 50 types of indicators and areas that had low levels of inequality. And we, and we saw that on the south side of the city, they are, they, those were segregated neighborhoods, but they have very good neighborhoods. And on the north side of the city, we see surrogated neighborhoods and they have high levels of concentration of disadvantage. So fast forward, we've been building these models. We have more data available and we use um, new spatial techniques to develop models at the local level. So we're starting at very large, very small levels of geography and we build up. And basically the premise here is, do you look like your neighbor? And on social and economic characteristics. And we, we run these models over and over again. And um, it, these are called spatial regime models. And we're looking at, at many different types of variables um, that are clustering together. And, and based on the work that was done using the 2010 census, just conceptually, there are different types of demographic transitions happening in the city, right? So we have the city, we have we know we have the story of what's going on at the city level. But that story is not true for every part of the city, right? Uh, we see different patterns that are happening here. And so there's one part of the city that, that's this, it, it's losing lots of people, right? This is the North part. There's a part of the city here where um, in the previous, the previous graph they show you, we have surrogated neighborhoods here in this red area, uh, but there's a tremendous amount of concentrated advantage in this area. This is, uh, these blue areas, uh, Midtown, Downtown, Central West End, uh, lots of investment, lots of people are moving into this area. Um, and then we have this, this area here that we call unknown. And the reason we call it unknown is because when we run our statistical models, it's not able to really tell us what's happening there. It's like it, anything can happen. And so it, it, we just say that the future of St. Louis in many respects depends on what happens in this orange area. There are lots of families. There are lots of families in this orange area. And so if the families in that orange area decide to leave at the rate that the families in this light blue area live, then the city is gonna to continue to lose people, right? And we have lots of black families who are living in this orange area. So just to, this is the average racial diversity tracts there. And so in the unknown area, these are the most racially diverse tracts in the city. In uh, negative momentum, there's not, much that, there's not that much racial diversity there. Uh, in the stable momentum, it's a little bit better, but in the positive momentum, you're, you're seeing um, racial diversity in, that type, in those types of census tracts. If we look at educational attainment, we see that in the positive momentum, they've achieved the highest educational attainment of residents 25 and over. Uh, so it's a score of 1.7, which essentially means about every, every person over 25 has close to a bachelor's degree, right? If you get a score of two, essentially everybody has a bachelor's, a bachelor's degree. A score of one means that essentially everybody is achieving high school level or a little bit less than high school level there. Um, and so um, you, you definitely wanna be above one in, in this score here. If we look at the average poverty rates, we see um, in the unknown it's 90%, the negative momentum, 30%, the stable neighborhoods, 12%, and the positive momentum is 24%. We looked at the five-year average homicide rates, um, and we see in the negative momentum, it's 10, 10 homicides per thousand residents. In the unknown, it's two, in the stable, it's one, in positive momentum, it is two. And lastly, if you look at where the people are leaving, we can see that it's in that one district that's identified as negative momentum, it's, it has lost about 18,000 residents, 18,000 are uh, black residents, right? It's just uh, an exodus of, of, and this is where our, our single female headed households are leaving. They're leaving that part of, of the city, uh, perhaps out to the suburbs or, or even moving outside of the St. Louis metropolitan region. But we don't see that number. We see it in the, and this is why the question where I argue that the unknown part of the city really relies in in this unknown area, right? And so if the black families continue that live in this unknown part of the city at the rate of the negative momentum district, then the city's gonna experience population decline. That's just, when you, when you lose 
families with children and you replace them with in single individuals, that's a very difficult math to overcome. And then we, of course, we do this by um, the 2020 census tract boundaries. What we're able to do is um, normalize the boundaries, normalize the 2010 population numbers to the 2021 boundaries. Just a, a, a caution here about this, these data analysis is that we do have um, 2020 in this data set and 2020 is a COVID year. And so there's, there's gonna be some noise in this, these five-year estimates. And so the, the, the first year that we will have COVID out of this data set will be in 2026. And so there should, when we do any type of an analysis with the neighborhoods at this level, we just have to have a word of caution about projections because um, any type of projections that's using these estimates that has 2020 in it, it's gonna have an element of noise in it, especially um, when you get to small geographical levels of geography. But you can see here, this is population change from 2010 to 2021. The 22 estimates will be out in December. If you look at it for black population change, um, everything that is shaded light red or dark red are, are neighborhoods, are census tracts that have lost the black population and everything that is light blue or dark blue are neighborhoods that have gained black residents here, right? And so we, we probably do see some migration from the north part of the city down to the south part of the city as well. And then this is white population change um, and so again, everything that's um, red and dark red or whites that are leaving. And then um, we have blue that are here. And so I'll get the question, are, are whites really moving into North City? The numbers are really small. We're not talking about big numbers. We're talking about 20, 20 25 people, uh, but it still represents a positive decline. And there's still like less than 1% of the population in these neighborhoods. The city is still made up of black, and white majority census tracts. Uh, and so what I've done with this map is everything that's coded uh, in a shade of blue are black major are white majority census tracts and everything that's coded in shades of yellow to red are black majority census tracts. And so we can get a sense that, uh, and this just shows you that um, I have it by population. So you can get a sense of, um, the absolute number of people that are living in those census tracts. And so the, the question for us is over here in this unknown area of St. Louis, how many of those families, and if it's black families who are leaving the city, how many black families over here are gonna stay in the city or how many are gonna leave the city? We kind of have a sense of what's happening here. Uh, we kind of know that the white families are fairly, for, for the most part are staying in the city with some small declines. Um, the, the real question is what happens here in this part of the city? And those, those, those projections are very difficult. Um, and then I would look at uh, racial diversity here. And so uh, not every census tract is racially surrogated. Um, and so the first thing we do is we calculate the racial diversity of the census tract. And then these are the tracks that contribute to racial segregation in the city of St. Louis. And so I, I often hear that the racial segregation stops at um, the Del Mar divide, and that's not true, that we see lots of tracks here in south part of the city that are just as racially segregated as north part of the city. And so I think we have to recognize that um, there are tracks that are integrated, right? These, these light blue areas are racially integrated tracks, but we do have, um, tracks that are racially surrogated in the part site in the south side of the city. And lastly, just the, the question is what is St. Louis unique? And so uh, just to keep it simple, I'm just gonna compare it to Baltimore, uh, Buffalo, Cleveland, Pittsburgh, and Milwaukee. We have a list of about 25 cities that we actually compare St. Louis to, but it wouldn't, for purposes of these charts, you wouldn't be able to see the trend here. And so we can see for the most part, um, most of these cities experience population decline, uh, except Buffalo. And I, I'm gonna, uh, and Buffalo was in the urban studies literature. Buffalo has always been this city that said, uh, that, we, that we use as a benchmark of how much of a population that you can lose uh, and trying to, to be 
grow your population here. So I'm going to come back to Buffalo here because this was this is a pretty remarkable story. What's happening in Buffalo? We can see it by race. Uh, so this is this is no surprise here. So the question that I get asked is, okay, so Buffalo, if Buffalo is experiencing a decline in the black and white population, why is it experiencing an increase in its total population? And the answer is very clear that Latinos have discovered Buffalo. Latinos are moving to Buffalo in fairly large numbers. And that is, and then we have the second group is Asian, but it's not as large as Latinos. And so Buffalo's rebirth as a city, in many respects, is, is largely related to Latinos finding the city of Buffalo, making their home Buffalo, and then followed by the Asian population. This is change in households. And so we do see uh, for white and black, for Baltimore, St. Louis, Buffalo, Cleveland, Pittsburgh, Milwaukee, uh, we see that the black families, uh, black households are in decline. And St. Louis really is this anomaly here in terms of white households during this time period, uh, a, a small increase from 2010. Changes in family household, um, when we break it by white and, fam white and black, um, we see in, in Baltimore, um, black families, we see a, a change, a positive change there. But for St. Louis, Buffalo, Cleveland, and Pittsburgh, they basically have the same change for black families. And then in Milwaukee, um, we see that white um, families are declining there. And then we look at non-family households. And again, uh, this, is, this is happening across almost every city in the United States. White single people are moving into the cities. Uh, there's a whole discussion on the creative class, um, but we see it here but in a small decline here in, in Milwaukee. Uh, so this is this is uh, fairly consistent. What, what we see here in St. Louis, it's it's not it's not unusual. Let's, we see this happening in other cities. I know I'm getting close to my my time being out, so I just want to end with a few comments. I think I think we should anticipate um, for at least the next year, maybe even two years, that the city um, will experience population loss. Um, it, it usually takes about a year to two years to turn those numbers around. We will know on July 1 when the population, the population estimates are already over because they, that, that time period ended in July of this past year. So right now they're just processing the data. So we'll know if, if the population estimates on July 1 show a decline in the city, then we can pretty much be in a safe area that the decline is coming from black female headed households. And that data is released in September. I think the long-term changes, um, we don't know, we cannot predict, but uh, it really is, uh, there are lots of families that can still leave the city of St. Louis. There are lots of black families that can still leave the city of St. Louis. And so we have to have a better understanding um, of why they're leaving. Are they being pushed out of their neighborhoods? Uh, I think this is not part of this research, but there's been a lot of discussion about Airbnb uh, places in the city of St. Louis. And I think, I think it's a fair discussion that there may have been some conversions happening where a lot of places where female headed households were living were pushed out and they were pushed out for these short-term rentals. And I think that's a, that's a very positive um, research question that we should explore in terms of what, what has happened and why, why is one group so sensitive to demographic change? I, I think we need to be prepared. It's, it's already happening that white households are gonna be the majority of households in the city of St. Louis. Unless something changes, the white population will again be the majority in the city of St. Louis. We'll know if, this, if, that, if that trend is correct, we'll find out in about 2025, 2026 with babies being born. If, if the majority of, if white babies outnumber black babies in 2025 or 2026, then the trend is going to be that the white population will be the majority, 50% of the population in the city of St. Louis in, in the near future. Household formation, um, if the trends continue, we are, we are gonna continue to lose black families, black families with children. And they're essentially being replaced with white, white single-headed households, primarily males. Um, and that change between black families and single white families has an impact on the social economic profile of the city. We should be prepared. 
um, it is possible, it's now in the realm of possibilities that the city of St. Louis will have natural rate of decline. It'll have more people dying and being born. Um, it's, a, it's a possibility. When you, when you replace your families with children and you replace them with single people, you no longer have, or you, you're losing your babies. And so we, we need to understand that that is now in, a this is a possibility for the city of St. Louis. And then we have to understand that we're losing cohorts. We, we can see specifically um, with these black female headed households that are leaving, we can see it with the female uh, population age um, 15 to 44, a, a pretty sharp decline different than its counterpart of white females in those same cohorts. And so we, we truly have to understand what that means for the long-term demographic profile of the city if, if this continues. So the city has demographic hurdles. It, it, needs to, it needs to help Black families stay in the city of St. Louis, especially those with children. If the trend doesn't continue, like you continue to lose Black families with children, you lose your demographic dividends that come from those births uh, of maintaining households, uh, schools, and so forth. And so, so there are consequences when you lose uh, families with children. And I will stop there. If you have questions, I'm happy to share the PowerPoint with you. Just send me an email, ness at sandoval at slu.edu. I don't know if we have time for questions, but my time, my 40 minutes is up. Thank you, Dr. Sandoval. We truly appreciate you, as I stated before. I know we have possibly 10 minutes. We do not have any public comment but I would like to open the floor to any public comment as the next section on the agenda. I don't know how we will get any of the public members to come off of mute, but if we could start to identify them, if there is any public comment at this time for the last 10 uh, minutes meeting. Chair Eccles, I'm not sure that this particular Zoom is set up for that um, necessarily based on my knowledge of the technology support right now. I'm thinking that's the case too. I just okay. wanted to cover it as it's number three on the agenda. Understood, okay. Okay. Can, because, go ahead, can, I don't know who- Thank you for the opportunity to present and please feel free to contact me if you have more questions. Dr. Sandoval, if you could, we'll email you immediately following this presentation so that we can get the slides, even though this was recorded for us. In order sure. for us to utilize it, we'll be sure to be in contact with you for the slides. And again, we okay. truly appreciate Thank you. No problem. Are we to ask questions now? You could, Commissioner Riley. Okay, I just have a few. Uh, thank you again <laughs> for the presentation. Thanks for the team for pulling this together. It's been very helpful for me as commission member and resident of the city. Um, first question I have is on the earlier slide, you, it was a, a bar there around other family change. What does other family mean? It's a, it can be a combination of, of different types of household formations that are there. And so it's, very, it's a very small number. Um, it, it could be um, a step parent taking care of um, children, but it's a very small number. Mm -hmm. right. Um, secondly, does the census include students or just tax-paying land-owning residents in the city? So the estimate will include, the ACS includes students. Um, the poverty estimates um, will try to take students, will take college students. Well, I'm, I'm assuming your question was about college students. So the AC estimates will include college students in the estimate. The, but the college students are taken out of the poverty estimate because the argument is that their poverty, most of them will come up as being li as living in poverty, that their poverty is different than uh, somebody who's working and are still in poverty. So um, this, this was a change made by the census. Where it'll say eligible households or eligible people. I, so they actually take out, I believe, um, uh, people who are incarcerated as well uh, in, in, those, in, in the poverty statistics. And then lastly, with the birth rates, does that include babies that are born in the city whose families don't reside in the city? 
So if I drive mm-hmm. to barns, I drive to children's. Now, this, these are mothers who live in the city. And so it is in fact, you could have some mothers um, who, where the baby was born uh, in St. Louis County, but the fact that the mother lived in the city, the, the, the birth is recorded in the city. Yep. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Um, let me see. Our charge this year is to try to be able to um, identify recommendations for the charter, uh, which, as we know, is old and obsolete in parts. Uh, updating uh, is important. What you've um, offered is some, I think, pretty startling information about what's been happening um, in the city in the last uh, uh, decade or so, but also the trends from, from much earlier. Um, have you gotten any information um, as part of the data that you've been collecting, particularly about the people who are leaving, um, that might reveal uh, um, areas that we as a charter commission might be focusing on to try to be able to um, help uh, um, uh, sta- staunch the, the outflow, if we want to call it that. I, I, I would guess that education and crime are obviously very high up, but what other kinds of issues um, um, have, have been revealed at this point as, um, um, as reasons for leaving? I, I think what, at least what I've heard anecdotally was when, I believe it's when Normandy Lots, is school, when it, Normandy Lots, it's accreditation and students are allowed to go to other school districts, literally overnight, Black families left the city to move to Normandy because they wanted their children to have access to the suburban school districts. And the only reason I knew about it is because people were calling me up and asking me what was going on, why so many Black families were moving uh, from the city to Normandy. And so I think that there is anecdotal evidence that, um, that mothers, when they make the decision to move or making the decision, the calculus has to include the opportunities for the child or the children. And so we, I think we clearly see it, that um, the black mothers are, are, are missing in the city of St. Louis from 2010. And um, it's a, it, these are small numbers every year, but the numbers add up to, um, and so we, we wanna make sure, so is it an issue of affordable housing? How many lost their housing through a conversion through Airbnb? Um, how many are seeing other types of opportunities happen in um, the suburbs? But we clearly know that that's happening. And so uh, the data sets, the, um, the IPUMS data, which is the ACS, what I'm providing is the data that's available to the public. The IPUMS data is gonna be available um, for this year in about a month. And what the IPUMS data will allow us, so it's looking at every individual. And so if we can go in and identify people who used to live in the city of St. Louis, where are they living now? And how many of them are, are black female headed households? Are they living, we'll just know, we don't know the city, but we'll know the Puma area that they moved to. And St. St. Louis County has a couple, St. Charles has a couple. Uh, I think it's pretty clear that we are seeing some movement out to the city, to St. Louis County, but now we're starting to see some movement out to St. Charles County uh, because we've seen an increase in um, black births out there. And so there's clearly, um, there's clearly some movement of going further west to try to find affordable housing. And I think, I think we have to really understand that uh, schools are very important. Mm-hmm. And if there's a perception that there's instability in not knowing where your child's gonna go to school next year, you're probably gonna make the move to go to a school, di- to go to a place where there's stability in the school district. Uh- Dr. Ness, do you have any supporting data or research around the Black families being pushed out of the city, whether it's family-led or male-led or woman-led? Do you have any data or research supporting that? We have, all, all we can say, this, using, this, using these data sets here, all we can say is that the population is declining. And that's, that's the primary reason why the city is losing people. Mm-hmm. It's losing black families with children. 
And we can see it with the births. We can see it with the mothers and babies being born, that that number is declining. Um, our, our lab is not set up to, to do focus groups or interviews with people um, to, to look at this, but it's, it's a possibility that there are other researchers that are looking at this. Um, we try to stay more at a quantitative, looking at large cohorts of people that are moving in and out of areas. But I'm, I'm, there's no other conclusion that you can draw why the city's losing people. It's, it's black families with children that are missing from 2010. Okay, thank you. Commission, do we have any further questions for Dr. Ness while we have him for two more minutes? I see um, uh, Commissioner Sheridan has his hand raised. Yeah, just just briefly. Um, one of the things, and this is more a comment for our commission, for my fellow commissioners, one of the things that this these data really show is as we are making recommendations or hearing from the public about recommendations, um, the question of for whom uh, should be at the top of our mind at all times. Um, because we, you know, we have the opportunity to uh, take recommendations forward to the broader community that uh, can really benefit some of the more um, at risk and fragile cohorts within within our community. And thinking about this on a, you know, hopefully this won't be a commission change that only takes another 150, 100 plus years since it'll be reviewed every every decade. But uh, for this first pass. Uh, I think look, having these, these uh, data in mind can help us keep, keep top of mind the most fragile and at risk. So thank you, Dr. Sandoval, for sharing that. Secretary Bobo, do we have anyone else with comments or discussion? I don't see any other hand raised. Um, if there's any other commissioner who has a comment or question that they'd like to raise at this moment, you can go ahead and do so. Okay, seeing none, um, turning this back over to you, Chair Eccles. Thank you. Thank you. I will now entertain a motion to adjourn. I so move. Second. I have a second. It has been moved and properly seconded that we adjourn this meeting. All in favor of adjournment, please say aye. 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 All of those not in favor say nay. Secretary Bobo, were you able to record our adjournment? Yes, thank you. Thank you everyone for attending. We appreciate you and thanks again, Dr. Ness.